Coach, unbelievable, incredible. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and on top of everything else, greatest victory maybe of all time, taking everything Michigan, Michigan State, and Illinois. And on top of that, there are over a thousand people in the driving rainstorm who are walking them back to the Cedar Rapids Airport. I'll tell you, that was truly incredible, Jim. Uh, people standing in the rain, the band, uh, just to see the football team get back home safe and sound after a, a fantastic game. And what about those Hawks <laughs> at the game? Oh. Well, I don't know that we see it or not, but our entire football team went over the corner of the end zone just to show their appreciation after the game. I've never seen anything like it. Just unbelievable. And, and uh, it is unbelievable to see. Iowa races away to a 28 to nothing lead, but what the heck? We're going to be back to show you all that. You stay tuned to the Aiden Price Show. Did you ever have a plan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got to give credit to the assistant coaches, Jim. I thought both sides of the ball, offense, defense, even the specialty team, came up with uh, super uh, tendencies on Illinois, and we really worked those into our game plan, and, of course, it took the players to execute it. Well, yeah, but now here's Illinois, the top rushing defense in the Big Ten, one of the top of the country, and you just took the ball right at them. <laughs> Well, we did a wonderful job, uh, there's no question. The blocking was super, the running was super, the play calling, uh, Matt Rogers did a great job. We never uh, dreamed, though, that we'd get a break like this on the first play. Illinois being up tight, fumble the ball, and John Derby goes in for the recovery. Isn't that correct? And then you'll see our first play, which really gives us a lift. This is Nick Bell running for 40-something yards on the first play, running over two or three guys in process. <laughs> Look at that big guy. And this more or less set the tempo for the game. It sure did. You got 335 yards against their defense. They got 16 yards on the ground against you. Now, you're talking about 335 just rushing. Yeah, right. Great play, touchdown strike to Mike Saunders, back of the end zone. That's tremendous. Are those guys happy? <laughs> got a pretty good wind over there, wasn't it? Well, yeah, it was a big factor, Jim. That's why we deferred after winning the toss to put the pressure on them to make a decision. You can see shots here of our great defensive play. They had a total of 16 yards uh, rushing in the ball game, and that guy carrying the ball right there, Griffith, has scored eight touchdowns in one game for an right. NCAA record. Set it on my record. See the beautiful blocking up front. I uh, want to take time to give the blockers credit for opening the hole for Nick Bell. You'll see Nick run time after time here for great yardage. Look at the hole. Uh, that's uh, Bellisser, left guard. Scott Davis at left tackle, Devlin at center, Agater at right guard, Baxley at right tackle, Tidley at tight end, and then Kajawa at fullback. This is Kajawa catching a one-man screen out in the left flat. And once again, he's filled in for our, our number one fullback, Lou Montgomery, extremely well. <laughs> Tony we, Stewart ran hard. Right. We, we try to rotate uh, Bell and Stewart to keep them fresh, and uh, Tony Stewart had another great game. In fact, this is the fourth game again, Jim, that uh, both Bell and Stewart have rushed for over 100 yards apiece. Yeah, big Nick came in 168, 145 in the first half. How about that? Well, <laughs> that was a great play. I don't, I don't know about Dana there. I'm going to have to talk to him about those moves. But that was Tony Stewart throwing a halfback pass for a touchdown. Caught Illinois completely off guard. Sure did. Got him flat foot. A perfect pass. Excellent defense. Watch Matt Rulin, number 57, shuck the blocker, reach up that big left arm, and knock the ball down. <laughs> and now the Hawk defense goes to work. Great pressure by Jimmy Johnson, Rod Davis, and Matt Rulin. Our defensive ends play well. Here comes Big Nick up the middle again. Drops the ball, but shows you how alert our offensive linemen were downfield to recover the fumble. That's right. Nick again, watch him bounce off two guys, Jim. Watch him turn it on for 255 pounds. That guy can fly. He can move, can he? Well, you know, this is very deceptive to a secondary. Uh, they come across their normal pursuit angles, and when they get there, Nick's already gone. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you, can't, you can't arm tackle him. Yeah. 21 to zip in the first quarter, and uh, I think Illinois is a little stunned by now. That's right. <laughs> Strike to Sean Smith on the out route. Uh, all the receivers had excellent games. Watch the hard running. Oh, Tony Great Stewart. Great north and south. Tony Stewart, excellent blocking. Yeah, Blake cool. inside, yeah. Here comes Matt outside. Now, Matt shows his versatility by running for a key first down That's to right. keep the drive going. Back inside again, Stewart running hard. You can see our uh, wide receivers throwing blocks downfield also. Here's a close-up of, of how we handle Mo Gardner and 
and the AG and, and all of those. They had five first team all Big Ten players on defense. <laughs> I know. Unbelievable. Boy, well, you ran through them and around them. Now we've got Nick Bell back inside. You see that guy fall there late. That's one of our wide receivers blocking. Yeah, right. Nick up the middle for another seven or eight. We're right down close to goal line again. There you go. Here's an option play. Watch Nick. He runs over two fellas to get it into the end zone. Yeah. He did that on just personal drive there, didn't he? Well, we had two fourth down in one or two situations, Jim, and rather than kick field goals, yeah. we decided Illinois was so uh, explosive, we better get all the points we could, so we went for it and made it. One of the most unbelievable scoreboard sights of all time, 28 to nothing first quarter. Great pressure by the defense. Here's a shot of Melvin Foster on a blitz stunt. And uh, watch him go right through uh, two offensive blockers for Illinois. Uh, Mr. Verdusco, welcome to the Big Ten. I'll tell you what, you've got to give a little number 10, the quarterback of Illinois, a lot, of, a lot of credit. He's a very courageous young man because he, he took some shots and put a normal quarterback out of commission. He came up to you after the game, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He, he's, a, he's a class young man. That was a catch by Wax, number 88. He's a great receiver, big, tall guy, got excellent speed and great hands. Iowa Hawkeyes 28 and Illinois 7 at this stage. This is uh, Matt throwing another perfect shot. Gets hit late, out of bounds. Yeah. A couple of those uh, unnecessary roughness penalties help keep our drive going. Right. Beautiful throw to Dana Hughes, who's wide open for a gain of 37. Great moves after he got the ball. Once again, our offensive line did not permit a quarterback sack, and neither did our quarterback for the fourth consecutive game throwing an interception. And Illinois has been averaging about six sacks a game. Well, look at this. Here we go. Fake field goal. <laughs> Easy touchdown to Matt Whitaker. Is he a happy guy? <laughs> I tell you, everyone's very happy there. We've been waiting a long time to pull that particular play. Yeah, you said you had that, and uh, you were just waiting for the right time to pull it. Okay. Merton Hanks, another outstanding game in the secondary. All of the guys, Eddie Polly missed two or three days of practice. Merton Hanks, they, but when it comes time to the kickoff, uh, uh, there they are playing great ball. Doug Book had some great hits. Leroy Smith had a great game, didn't he? Leroy Smith and, and Santos. Now, they really foxed us on that one. They, they uh, did an excellent job of executing that touchdown pass. I bet you just stared at that scoreboard, didn't you? And 35 to 14? Not really, Jim. I'll tell you what, I was very uneasy till right the end of the game because Illinois is so explosive and they had all those great stats yeah. coming in. Uh, we figured we needed to score every point we could. Well, the Hawkeyes didn't let up. They came back with even more points in a tremendous second half. You stay tuned. We'll bring it to you. about and I imagine you were too a little bit as a coach was you know a little bit of friction antagonism between Iowa and Illinois and the fans were kind of getting on Iowa before the game you could hear that up in the press box but you took them out of it fast well we did Jim and in fact I got my football team together on the sidelines and we talked about it that uh, hey we've got too much class to let something uh, like this affect us and uh, I thought our guys did an extremely good job and of course after we got so far ahead, we kind of took the crowd out of the game. <laughs> I know. And you kept on doing it in the second half. Weather uh, was surprisingly good, about 70 degrees at game time, 15 mile an hour wind. Well, actually, it was very hot and humid down on the field. This is a strike to Michael Tidley, big tight end. He does a great job of running after catching the ball. That was a key first down play. This is uh, Rogers to Nick Bell. Big, Nick. big guy makes 18. This is our first drive after the half, and you can see, look at, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Those secondary people, they get their heart in their throat and they come up yeah. to tackle Nikolai. Yeah. Excellent running by Kajawa. He only carried it a couple of times. He averaged 10 or 12 yards per carry. Here's a beautiful pick. Excellent fake and a perfect throw to Dana Hughes, the corner for the touchdown. <laughs> Rogers. And, you know, Jim, the thing's overlooked, the great protection by the offensive oh. line on these plays. Unbelievable. Even Herky gets into the act there. 41 to 14 now, early in the uh, third quarter. Another great uh, rush by the defensive team. Jim, they just kept pressure on number 10 the whole game, and yet the little guy stood in there and threw the ball. And got to they, admire him for that. They got 28 points, yeah. I'll tell you. That's why we were worried. Yeah. Great pressure again. Santos, Leroy Smith, uh, Maria Crane came in, Jason Dumont. 
Uh, we had quite a few guys that did an excellent job. Ron Gaynor and Jeff Nelson came in and did an excellent job. Oh, okay. Strike to Dana again. <laughs> he's from uh, New Jersey. He's, he's enjoying it, I tell you. Oh. He said that folks back home could watch it on TV. That's correct. Ripping up the middle again, Tony Stewart. I'm sure that uh, Gardner and A.G. and all those people didn't know really what was going on. <laughs> they just weren't used to that. That well, was Bill Goldberg Skillet. Had another great game. Jeff Skillet become extremely accurate and consistent. He sure has. Look at that job by Leroy. <laughs> Leroy Smith. I get a big kick out of Kid Leroy. He's from Slickerville, New Jersey. <laughs> Excellent throw, catch. That's yeah, a kid by the name of uh, Mueller. Five Hawks in on the tackle. Great pursuit to the football. They stayed in a shotgun most of the second half trying to play catch up. Well, they got only 16 yards on the ground, so they had to do the rest of it through the air. Well, they had to desert their game plan, that's for sure, Jim. But it's very tiring. We had uh, three players become dehydrated in the ball game. The right. heat and humidity. When you're in a shotgun, you have to run a lot further to get to the passer, and it's very tiring. That was Sean Wax again. Touchdown to number 88, <laughs> Carlos James. <laughs> put, put the tag on him there. It appeared to me that it might have been a little bit late, but uh, <laughs> they didn't throw a flag. Well, Wax had been tormenting you a little bit there during the game, hadn't he? Great rush by the defense. Uh, Mike Wells came in, the defensive nose guard, and uh, oh, a job. did a great job when Rod Davis went to the sideline. <laughs> Both of our uh, Iowa linebackers, uh, you, you can see the guys celebrating there, uh, Matt Rulin again, but uh, right. Ted Bailey and uh, Mike Daly uh, right. came in and did an excellent job. Late stages of the game, Illinois going to the air. Brett Bilma made a couple of big plays for him. It was a great one. Great play. And I thought he was in the end zone, didn't you? Yeah, there's no question about it. He's in the end zone. and uh, But we didn't get the touchdown. We're on the six-inch line. And Matt Rogers takes it in. But we really caught Illinois off guard on that particular play. Well, the, the fake to Nick Bell really set that up. Fake to Nick Bell and the great protection by the offensive line. And then Sean Smith ran a great pattern. Watch uh, Jim Hartley on a bootleg here playing for <laughs> Matt Rogers. Runs like a bull. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> and then Jimmy gets clobbered late outside. Yeah, right. So we settled for a field goal with uh, Skillet again, right through the upright. And there you have it. You can see just, uh, well, the tremendous end of the game, the great score, 54-28. And now uh, you can see just here as you head off the field, uh, you've been over to uh, greet the Iowa player, or the well, Iowa fans. We ran over. Our tickets were right in the corner of the end zone, and we had probably a couple of thousand Iowa fans there. It sounded like 15,000. Yeah. Our entire team, without any instruction from me, ran over to show the appreciation to the Iowa fans. And then when you came home on the bus, I mean, a thousand people at the airport. Jim, that was incredible. Standing in the rain, uh, we had the band, we had a thousand people. They had roses to give to the players <laughs> on the bus. It was uh, something that only happened in Iowa. That's right. And I bet your kids appreciate that, don't they? Greatly appreciate it. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, the uh, season is great so far, but some tough ones coming up. And President Hunter Rawlings is going to be with us next on the Hayden Fry Show. <laughs> President of the University of Iowa, Hunter Rawlings, to the Hayden Fry Show. And I can say one thing, President Rawlings, you picked the appropriate time to come on the Hayden Fry Show. <laughs> Let me tell you, this was, uh, this was quite a day yesterday, and we enjoyed it immensely. I've never seen a better quarter of football than that first quarter, and the whole game was perfect from our standpoint. Hayden, uh, to get right into it, you have always used in your recruiting the total university, not just the athletic program to recruit football players. Well, Jim, I think it's only... Uh realistic that we have the uh, highest level of communication at the university to talk about our academic program with us. I'd like to welcome President Rollins with us Thank because you. we do stress the academic side of the University of Iowa and uh, uh, I know President Rollins is extremely proud of our faculty and administration and the quality of our education and I'd like to for you to direct your question to President Rollins to uh, talk about our university. Well, uh, what is the type of thing that you say to a young athlete when he comes on if you were recruiting him? Well, one of the things we like to say is that we've got a program here in uh, athletics that combines the best of academics and athletics. We've worked hard, I think, to build up uh, a real reputation in that area. 
We're especially pleased that someone like Nick Bell, for example, can come into the university, find his way academically, and do so well uh, academically as well as athletically. Everybody's talking about Nick as a super athlete, which he is, but he's also a super student. And that happened here at the University of Iowa because Coach Fry has been emphasizing uh, that aspect of what students do. You know, covering the scene, the thing I'm happy about President Rawlings is there was a little bit of friction, a little bit of, uh, you know, firing from the hip maybe, and yet now there's a high degree of compatibility. Why, why don't you talk about that a little bit? Well, we're really pleased with the cooperation we've had, and uh, Coach Fry's been out uh, talking about how important academics are because that's a lifetime's preparation for these students, some of whom go on into pro ball, but many of them don't, of course, and so mm -hmm. they need a good education. And last year's graduation rate among the football players was incredibly high, mm -hmm. and so that's the kind of message we like to send to uh, recruits when they come here. Hey, and how has uh, the academic athletic picture changed, let's say, in the last five years from your standpoint? Well, a big thing, Jim, our support group. We, we have all types of academic people that supervise everything from scheduling uh, the classes for the young men, uh, study tables, uh, compulsory study hall three nights a week. Uh, that phase of academic supervision has really made progress. On the other hand, we've had to because the university has tightened up their academic requirements, the NCAA has tightened up their entrance requirements, and the Big Ten has a set of rules. So an athlete at the University of Iowa really has three different standards to meet in, in regards to his progression towards receiving a d degree. And you've got to be happy, President Rawlings, with the way, you know, the coaches around the country weren't too happy with all this uh, at first. And now it seems to be, and Hayden Fry, I think, reflects that view, that they're going along with it really I well. think that's right, Jim. It's coming together really well right now. What we like to say is that we've got high standards in our program, high standards athletically and high standards academically, and the students live up to that. I think student-athletes like a challenge like that. They budget their time very effectively, and we're just very pleased with the results we're getting. Well, I think when you look at the total national picture, I think a couple of years ago somebody said there were 20,000 college basketball players, and 40 of them made it to the pros. So a whole lot of them are going to have to rely on their college degrees. And, and I think that's what Hayden's been emphasizing to these uh, students, is that the long-term preparation is the academic preparation. That's what you need for your whole life. And the athletics are great fun while you're enjoying them, but for many of these students, they won't be able to do that for too much longer. And I think you see the reflection, if I can take a few words out of uh, Hayden's mouth here, uh, in this present University of Iowa football team. Hayden, you stress the character of this team, the personality of it, uh, the compatibility of it, the chemistry and so forth. And I would think that reflects on academics, too. Well, Jim, uh, it reflects on the, on the field, that's for sure, because the character and the quality of the young men that we have recruited is the main reason that we've been winning. And, uh, well, I guess Coach Rawlings, so we can say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, President Rawlings is six feet seven. That's why I said a while ago I, we're speaking with a man with the very highest level <laughs> well, of says, academic understanding. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but I think it's helped you, too, to have athletic understanding because you're a former athlete yourself. Oh, it's been great for me. Uh, you know, I've been out pitching against our baseball team on occasion. By the way, they roughed me up pretty good, I'm afraid. But uh, we've had a lot of fun with the athletic program, and we travel often with them. We enjoy a lot of aspects of it and uh, you know our women's programs are also very strong so we've got the balance that I think most universities are really envious of. Well I know you'll become a very popular guy among uh, your peers in the next couple of weeks if Hayden just keeps on winning they'll all be hitting you for Rose Bowl tickets. I tell you this it already happened this morning uh, I've got calls early this morning from old friends quote unquote on the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> well we all want to be in Pasadena so Hayden thanks a lot and Hunter Rowling, thanks a million for coming on our thanks. show. Thanks. It's a real pleasure to be here. Okay. And we'll be back with more and talk about what's coming up for the Hawkeyes, and it's tough. Next. Uh, the last Iowa team to win five games to start the Big Ten season was way back in 1958. Nobody in Iowa history has won six in a row. You got a shot at it, but the opponent is Ohio State this Saturday. I tell you, Ohio State through the years, Jim, has had uh, the bug on us. Uh, I know it's been extremely difficult since we've gotten here. In fact, one year, as you recall, we had a fourth and 26 at Columbus, Ohio, with about oh. six seconds left on the clock, and pulled it out. And then we beat them here at Kinnick Stadium in a what a 20 to 14 game. Right, right. November 14, 1987, hard leave to cook. I'm not going to forget that. <laughs> <laughs> Went real crazy when that happened. What about the Buckeyes coming in now? The uh, are you going to try to run on them, pass on them, or what kind of team are they? Well, Jim, I, I frankly thought they should be the favorites coming into the season uh, this summer, knowing they had 18 of their top 22 players returning, and the way they handled us uh, last year, yeah. I thought they should be the favorites. 
And uh, it's going to be a very complex, difficult game. And, of course, I haven't had a chance to study him at this point. Mm -hmm. What about the healthier ball club not coming out of the only game? I think by midweek we'll have most of our guys back. It was a very uh, physical ball game. We've got some guys, uh, you know, going to miss the first two or three days of practice, but uh, no operations. That's great. That's tremendous news. And is uh, Lou Montgomery about ready to come back? There's a possibility our number one fullback could come back, and he's going to have a hard time beating out Kajawa. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, once again, representing all Hawkeye fans, congratulations to you. Thank you, Hawks. Jim. You bet. Tremendous victory. Let's hope we get a few more of them. We'll be back next week with the Hayden Fry Show. The Hayden Fry Show, brought to you in part by Amana Refrigeration. When you know exactly what you want, Amana. By Bud Light, everything else is just a light. And by Highland Potato Chips, the flavor of America's heartland. Set furnishings by McGregor's Furniture in Coralville, featuring a Thomasville gallery. Fine home furnishings since 1896, with seven other Iowa locations. This has been a copyrighted presentation of the University of Iowa.